that. Welcome, it is the Donovan Sadiq Show. We are back on. How many of you guys remember that song by uh, Muslim rapper, a, a Nation of Islam member, Cam? He's one of my favorite uh, rappers because he talks and uh, spreads Minister Louis Farrakhan's message. Really, really uh, good stuff. If you got some of his albums, awesome albums, great production, a lot of stuff going on there. But hey, you guys, welcome. My name is Donovan Sadiq. You guys are tuned in to the Donovan Sadiq Show, you, and I want to wish you guys a welcome, welcome, welcome. I was on the war zone with the five-star general tonight, and Demetra has the week off because she's going to take some time for herself to spend with her family and enjoy getting away. I know you guys enjoy the queen. Yes, you guys enjoy her. But I'm saying this online. I want this to be publicly known. I discovered her. She is my discovery. Now, I will sell her contract for the right price. So let's let that go out there. Uh, no, but Demetra and I have been friends for over 30 years, went to the same high school. And, uh, you know, I do a lot to keep her in check and keep her informed. I taught her everything she knows, you guys. If you guys didn't know that, when you guys look at her and you say, wow, she really knows what she's talking about, she's really into all this stuff, I taught her everything she knows. But uh, no, in all seriousness, she gets a lot of that from her family. They have an exceptional family. They do a lot of great stuff. The five-star general has touched down in Minneapolis. And as you guys know, the George Floyd um, trial for the uh, Chavin officer, the former Minneapolis officer and murderer Chavin is taking place. They are in the midst of rigging this um, trial case. We, you know, it's obvious what the outcome is going uh, to is going to be and my question as i said on a, a war zone the night was what are we going to do about it we know what the outcome of this is going to be but it just seems to me we keep going from tragedy to tragedy to tragedy and we just have no answers well we have answers the problem is everybody wants to just do what they've been doing just to talk shit. one of the last things we said on the show tonight was it's, it's just amazing to me how I can ask somebody in the black community about uh, HR 40 or a, a bill that is significant to black people and they really can't tell me much about it other than the soundbite. But if I ask them about, well, did you see Coming to America too? Oh God, it was horrible. Oh God, it was great. Oh my God. They can tell you everything about the movie and it can go into that. But yet they can't seem to tell you what is going on in their own community. Thus, you have the new black media out there and all these different platforms that try to inform you. But the funny thing is, we spend most of our time fighting the very people who are just trying to inform you. If you don't believe what the new black media or people are trying to tell you, that's fine. But it, you know, I have to call you out and it's kind of suspect to me that a soundbite by the national known media that has an agenda against black people, you guys are quick to believe that. Please explain that to me. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. I, I just, <coughs> excuse me, I just really, really don't get it. But, you know, I'm not bowed, nor I'm not persuaded. Uh, I'm not giving up because uh, I have woken up a lot of people and I've done that in conjunction with other new black media outlets and if we can just get one person to think I'm not asking you guys to believe what I believe or say what I say I'm just asking you guys to think for yourselves and do some critical thinking because that's one thing we're lacking critical thinking so you know to make a long story short here and it's the funniest thing. My mom calls me uh, yesterday, and I'm, in, I'm at Walmart doing some shopping or whatever I'm doing. And she calls me and she goes, uh, Maxine Waters. As you guys know, um, I'm a California resident. I've been here since I was six months old. I've lived, lived here off and on uh, outside of my military career. I'm a California kid, but I was born in, in Louisiana. And my mother uh, calls me and she goes, I've been like looking up on... Maxine Waters and she goes I don't see any legislation there and I said mom what 
is it that I've been trying to tell you and everybody else for the last six years? The stuff that we say on the show? Black politicians ain't shit. They have no legislation that you could actually name off the top of your head. You know what I mean? Like, I'm talking about substantial legislation, like, um, you know, something that's just like, you just remember it. This this is something that just changed the the nation, people's lives, you know? Everybody knows about the, um, the abortion, you know, bill and all this other stuff but no you know there's black politicians all they do is name post offices and they they do civil rights decrees and give out civil rights medals to their buddies that's all they do so and don't get me wrong i do not blame my mom or anybody from the civil rights era that want to defend people in their age bracket you know that's human nature you're going to do that but you got to call it out for what it is And, you know, my mother was like, I was like, well, mom, what were you expecting to find? You know, and she was just like, well, you know, she's been in there since 1993. Well, there's, she hasn't done anything. That's right. That's right. Auntie Maxine doesn't even live in the uh, neighborhood that she represents, the district that she represents. She doesn't even live there. So what does that tell you? You know, I don't have a problem with these politicians making millions of dollars, but couldn't she have lived in a mansion right there in South Central Los Angeles? She could have built a mansion right there. She has the money. She funnels the money to her family. You know, so I don't want you guys to think that I'm just like on top of black people all the time. I'm just calling out what I see. And unfortunately, a lot of you Negroes out there, you don't live in Los Angeles. And if you did live in it, you don't live here no more because you can't afford it. Because these representatives are not protecting you. And your um, bell, dog on dog drive me crazy here. They, uh, they're not protecting you. So you're, you know, you're being gentrified out of your neighborhood, which is, which is what Maxine Waters did. She gentrified her neighborhood. And, uh, you know, people are gone. So now, you know, the Hispanic population is catching up and uh, they're pr- eventually they're going to take her out. And so me and my mom are talking. And as we're talking, I said, well, mom, you know, you are aware that at 83 years old, Maxine Waters thinks that the song WAP is very empowering to black women. My mom was like, what the hell is WAP? And I gave her the definition of what WAP is. And then she goes, what? She goes, you know, and my mom's very raw because she was in the army and stuff. So she talks to her sons because she only had two boys. So she talks to us, you know, very plain. She makes it very, everything is very, very plain with her. And uh, she was like, well, what would Maxine Waters know about WAP? I said, exactly, exactly. But she said, that's empowering. My mom was, that's ridiculous. I said, well, mom, that's why we need term limits. I'm not saying, you know, I don't want to get on ageism or something like that because, you know, you're, oh, this person's 80 years old, they shouldn't run. But if you have to be a certain age to run for certain offices, shouldn't there be a cutoff for the time that you you could occupy that office? Dianne Feinstein is completely a walking zombie at this point. Joe Biden is almost there. We need term limits, you guys. And, and, you know, and I also believe that if we had term limits, a lot of this bullshit that's going on in Congress with both parties, would, it wouldn't stop, but it would cut off these lifelong politicians. You should not be a professional politician. That shouldn't even be a vernacular word in the American dictionary, professional politician. There's, there shouldn't be such a thing. You should do your time and then go and let somebody else get in there and then go. What does a 92-year-old person know about what is going on to this very day and how it affects, you know, the new dynamic versus when they were here in 1932 as a young person? So anyway, I'm Donovan Sadiq. I'm going to talk about today. If you guys haven't heard, I'm going to do a video on it. I hope you guys check out the video. It is about the L.A. Sheriff's Department here in California has found out that they have a gang problem within its ranks. And it's funny that when we talk about gangs, 
we think black. You know, gangs of the 90s, NWA, Bloods and Crips. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about Mexican cartel type gangs. As California is getting more and more gentrified and black people are leaving and Hispanics are taking over what was former Mexico, their native land, they are also bringing the cartel culture with them. And they are finding that there is a gang culture within the LA Sheriff's Department. We haven't even talked about the police department. We're talking about the sheriffs. And there is a video, the uh, sheriff of LA County is total in denial. He's totally delusional. And I'm gonna show a video a little bit later if you guys get a chance to watch it. And it's gonna show where this guy's sitting there. And this is where you, where you gotta think about critical thinking. This is when I talk about critical thinking. He sits there and denies that there is a gang problem within his organization. There's no gang problem. That's what the sheriff of LA have, has said. He's on record saying that. There is no gang problem in the LA Sheriff's Department. But in the same breath, he says, if there is, it will not be tolerated. Well, Mr. Sheriff, either it, do you have a problem or you don't. There is no if there is. Because if you're saying if there is, then you're aware there's a problem. And I'm going to put the video together and I'm going to show you guys exactly what's happened. Because how can you deny that there's a, there is not a, a gang problem when you have officers that have come out on a local news channel, did an interview where they were so afraid that they hid their you know, identity and all that other stuff. So we have a problem out here. And I talk about white supremacy and how a white supremacy operates. Now, it is obvious that white people are aware that they will be the minority in the next several years. But guess what? White people don't have a problem like that as long as they are on top. They don't mind being the minority. And I saw what minority rule looked like for myself when I went to South Africa. In South Africa, 70% of all the wealth is still controlled by the 7 to 11% of white people that are in the country. Apartheid ended almost 30 years ago. 30 years ago, if not more, but about 30 years ago. And white people in that country that are the minorities are still in control of all of the wealth. The majority of the wealth. I can't say all of it, but the majority of it. And we saw it, I, you know, uh, Demetra and I went to Soweto and you've got black people literally living in cardboard boxes and just abject poverty. I mean, it's just, it's, it was horrible. It was horrible in cardboard boxes, uh, no running water, no, you know, insulated stuff. How <sighs> being in America, you know, when I hear people, especially black people talk about oh, we're gonna move back to Africa. It's easy to say that when you've never been there, okay? I'm talking about like Africa. We are so accustomed to living a certain lifestyle that when you, you know, what they don't realize, when you go to these countries, you're not gonna have the amenities that you do have here. Uh, there's a term that they, they call, it's called the ugly American syndrome. And the ugly American is when, you know, an American goes over there and like, I'm an American. And, you know, they're in these other countries and they think that they can do whatever they want in these other countries based on their experience of being Americans. And they don't realize you're in another country and you're going to do it their way, their laws, so on, so on, so forth. Right. Oh, we're American. So we're better than everybody else. You know, that that bullshit. So when you go to these countries. Yeah, you're going to do well for the simple fact that you know, you are an American and you have some said resources. But the sad thing is, as I've said earlier in this program, that if 70% of black people live at about or near the poverty level, it wasn't this program, it was another program earlier today, I, I did a quick snippet on the um, COVID relief bill. So please forgive me on that. 
As you guys know, that did pass today, by the way, and minus the $15 an hour, which would have helped 32 million Americans, not just black, 32 million Americans, I don't give a shit who they are, out of poverty. So that, I'm gonna assume that would help a lot of us out of poverty, even though that $15 an hour was uh, wage grade, you know, it's a step grading uh, in, in an interval. So anyway, they talk about, oh, I'm gonna go to Africa or whatever, you're, you'll be surprised when you go over there how things are very, very different. You know, we are just now finding out here in America that we are actually living in a third world country because, again, most of the wealth in this country is controlled by less than 5% of the population. Either you're a have or you're a have not in this country, and that's the way it's going to be. And that's the way it seems like everybody likes it. So, um, so yeah, so they, you know, they, they talk all this crap and they go over there, absolute abject poverty for the uh, people who are have-nots. White people live in these pristine areas that are locked off and closed off, high security. It was just unbelievable. And you know, even though these black people live in cardboard boxes, as I've said on previous shows, everybody had a satellite dish. Everybody's got a cell phone. And then I come back to America and I look at what black people here in America and I say, same mentality. It's the same exact mentality. People are the same everywhere. Yeah, believe that. So, gang problems. So white people want to stay on top. They don't care how they do it. As long as they can, if they can stay on top by proxy. And when they stay on top by proxy, that means using another group to assist keeping white supremacy in power. And that's a proxy. You know, it's just like what the government does when we go overseas. We fight wars via proxy. So like in Afghanistan, when the Russians invaded Afghanistan, we armed the Kurds and all those other people that helped the Afghanistan, you know, um, bin Laden, all those people, and we gave them the arms and they fought the Russians without us having to do it. That's what we mean by proxy. You know, I hate that I have to break all this stuff down, but a lot of people don't read and they don't care to read. They watch a lot of movies, but they don't know shit, right? So that's how white supremacy is operating here in the United States. So what they've done is, that's why you see the Democratic Party catering so much to the Hispanic groups. And even Joe Biden said it himself. He said, you niggers need to get in line. He didn't say that, I'm paraphrasing. But basically, that's basically what he said when he was talking to those so-called civil rights leaders and black leaders, whatever, in that secret meeting. You niggers need to get in line and get ready to take orders from these Hispanics. Because again, for 60 years, our numbers haven't moved. In a democracy, one man, one vote, one woman, one vote, whatever, how you want to call it. But if your numbers are not growing, then your vote as a group means nothing. Even though black people are the only group of people that vote as a block, and we give all of our votes overwhelmingly to the Democratic Party, and we receive nothing in return. What the Democrats don't care about, because Joe Biden will be dead and all these people will be dead, I'll probably be dead, you guys listening will probably be dead, is Hispanics, 50% 50% of them, almost, vote Republican. So they're going to let 11 million people who do not have citizenship in this country be, find a pathway to citizenship only to not vote for the party that gave them that pathway, where the Democratic Party is the only group of people that vote and work against themselves because they don't care. They are corporate Democrat hacks. And this is what you guys have got to stop thinking. The Democratic Party does not represent the working man and the blue collar worker. They don't do that anymore. They are corporate hacks. Donald Trump ran as a populist. Who identifies in the the Republican Party as a Trumpster? It isn't the elitists because they don't even like Donald Trump because he ain't got no money. Donald Trump is broke. He's in those circles where the people have real money. Jeff Bezos, I mean, no, people with real money. Donald Trump don't work with those people, man. 
he don't run with that. He doesn't run in that circle. He wants to, but now he's been exposed. So now you got your lowly white supremacist, you know, the, the, the white person that is homeless, the white person that feels that because they're white, they're disadvantaged. Those are the people that support Trump. You know, the, 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 the people that are the blue collar workers of the Republican Party. They're even trying to rebrand themselves. They're calling themselves the, the, the working party. The Republican Party is the, the party of the working person. He ran as a populist. And he won. So for all you guys that keep thinking that the Democratic Party, they don't do that anymore. These parties switch their mantras about every 30 to 40 years, one or two generations. They switch and they keep switching between this and that, that and this, this and that. I remember at one time, the Democratic Party was a war hawk party. That's how we got into the Vietnam War. That was under a Democratic regime. And the Republicans had to clean it up. And then somehow along, uh, along the other, the Republicans under Reagan became the war hawks. And then the Democrats became the pacifists. And it just goes on and on and on. Creative, th you know, critical thinking, everybody. You just got to think about what is going on around you. But, you know, you guys want to hold on to these tropes that your parents keep telling you. You know, be patient, be patient. 60 years, you know, weren't they saying be patient in the 1960s to the Black Panthers? Weren't they saying that to Malcolm X? Weren't they saying that to the Nation of Islam? Wasn't Martin Luther King saying that to everybody? And then LBJ and the Democratic Party and um, all these folks were telling them to be patient, just wait. Don't do the civil rights on Washington right now. Don't don't do the march on Washington. Don't do this on don't do this march. Don't go down to Birmingham. Be patient. Isn't that what he, what they were telling him? So after 60 years of no movement of the civil rights movement and the civil rights fighters, a lot of the civil rights fighters joined the very oppressors that they were fighting and got paid. Can't, you know, I blame them, but I can't blame them. Now, 60 years later, you're asking us to be patient a little bit longer? Huh? What? Can't do it. 60 years in my book is enough. I am sick and tired of being pushed to the back of the line when it comes to being a citizen here in the United States. I'm not doing it. We fought in every war that this country has ever been involved in, and we fought better and lost more lives in just about, in just about any other group outside of white people themselves. And this is how you treat us? But nobody wants to, to see the Democratic Party for what it is. It's a shell game. They are constantly either moving the goalpost or switching the shells to thinking you're doing one thing and doing the other. I get tired of people who get involved in politics every four years and they, I'm voting for the Democrats, I'm voting for the Republican, for president, and, you know, and that's all they really know. I have a friend that keeps telling me, oh, well, the parliamentarian took it out, so, you know, the Democrats just couldn't do anything. The parliamentarian is an advisor. Kamala Harris could have kept that in there. Why not? You got the votes. Why not? Do you know how hard it is to bring a bill to the floor once it comes out of committee? It, you know, it ain't like the, the, these things go in the committee and the next day they're out. It could be in committee for months. Do we have time to wait to see? And then the Democrats try so hard to work with people that don't want to work with them. And then the Republicans go to their old playbook. Yeah, yeah. If you do this, we're, we're going we're, we're gonna to vote for it. Yeah, we're going to vote for it. Don't worry about it. You got it. Take that out of the bill. We're going to vote for it. You got my word. Yep, we're going to vote for it. Take it out and see what happens. Then the dumbass Democrats take the damn thing out of the bill and not one 
Not one Republican votes for it. But see, I, I don't think that that was an accident. I think that was by design. And I don't, I'm not talking about the Republicans. I'm talking about the Democrats. They are corporate elitists. Think about it. If you're a corporate Democrat, do you really want that $15 an hour bill in the budget or in the bill? Do you really want it? Do, do your corporate overlords really want that in the bill? Of course they don't. And you guys fall for it because you're not critically thinking. Oh my gosh, it is right there. I'm a corporate Democrat. I work for the corporations. Do you think I or my overlords want to pay more money for employees when I don't have to? So I'm going to finagle a way to get that $15 an hour out of the bill and just kick the can down the road. And that's what they did. But you so-called longtime dummy crats, and that's what I call you, a dummy crat. I'm a recovering dummy crat or Democrat, however you want to call me. But I realize this game and what they're doing. And you guys fall for it. They, that's the only thing that they took out of the bill. The one thing that could have gotten 32 million Americans out of poverty. That's the one thing they took out, took out of the bill. But back to my thing with uh, white supremacy. They use a proxy, and here in LA, S uh, Southern California, you have a lot of Hispanics that are now in the police department. And what they're finding in these police departments is gang activity that is going on, gang tattoos, gang killings, gang initiations, and gang shootings. I'm gonna put that video up, and if you guys get a chance, please check it out, You know, give me some feedback and, and let me know what you think about it. And they're going to be using these gangs to do their dirty work. So with the marijuana thing coming out, the prostitution, I mean, we, you know, it, it, all of this stuff is just tying in. And they're bringing these acts, shall I say, from across the border in Mexico. And they're just doing it here. I mean, it, there's, I mean, and w what's really sad is Hispanic on Hispanic crime. So now you're seeing Hispanics, uh, mothers crying out as their sons are being murdered in the street by LA Sheriff County cops and probably police. But right now I'm talking about the sheriffs over this gang warfare type culture and initiation. People are getting, uh, it's the same playbook they use on black people that they just have escalated now because you know there's really not too many black people in Southern California anymore because we can't afford to live here. It's been gentrified out. But you know, people are being murdered. Evidence is being planted. Uh, policemen are being uh, investigated but nothing done. The culture of corruption has basically taken over these police departments and it is becoming a problem as if you know if as we, I, i'm convinced there is a gang problem a mexican cartel gang problem and i'm convinced that if that is the fa the, the fact the mexican cartels will soon be running these police departments one way or the other and nobody gives a damn because it comes to the money that is being made in the black markets and the illicit trades of drugs and prostitution. On Figueroa Street, you know, which is a known street here in California, you can look it up on YouTube, you will see young girls actually walking right in the streets as if, as if this is somewhere in Tijuana, Mexico, unmolested by the police, plying their trade. This is where we're at. And nobody seems to think there's anything wrong with it or it needs to you know, be stopped. We are now on the precipice 
of being literally a third world country. We are, we are, we are a third world country. It's just not in name. It's just not in name. Because, like, again, if you go to these so-called third world countries, they're building, they're growing, their people are employed. You know, they've been, there's, there's nowhere up to go for them but up. For the United States, we've been on a dime, downhill slope since World War II. We can't seem to win wars anymore. There is no end game. We're in forever wars. The rich just keep getting richer and richer. Nobody has a problem with a corrupt president or Congress or representative. They've legalized corruption here. And everybody just keeps going along to get along. Not concerned about it. But if we do not do something about it, your grandkids are going to have to deal with this problem just like the civil rights era grandkids have to deal with the problem that they didn't take care of. As a black person, no other group wants to ally with us. Stop believing that bullshit. That is total lies. Hispanics do not want to partner with us. Asians definitely don't want to partner with us. We're on our own out here, y'all. We can't even come together within ourselves. Regardless if you agree with me or, and the new black media and some of the things that we're saying, why the fuck are you trying so goddamn hard to make sure we're not heard? All you guys do is parrot what you hear on TV, but you can't substantiate anything on your own. you know, critical thinking on your own. And that's a fact, because when I talk to some of you guys, a lot of what you say I could hear on MSNBC or I can hear it on Fox. No, nothing to back it up. But yet you keep telling me the Democratic Party is a party for the working class, but yet you cannot name any substantial legislation by the Democratic Party to help the working class. Oh, they gave us a one-time $1,400 stimulus check. Yay. That over helping 32 million Americans. So now in our police departments, the police department which is invented to protect the rich, now we are getting a gang element within that organization. How is that going to help our communities if the very institution that we depend on to protect us and to serve us is now serving itself? And these politicians know all this stuff is going on, but choose not to do anything about it. So just remember, you guys, check out my video. I'm going to put it up. It's going to be a nice little production because, you know, when a black man speaks, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, it can't be true because you didn't see it on MSNBC or Fox. So we're going to just go ahead and just discredit the black man as much as we can. No matter what Donovan says, we have to just make sure he's not heard. That's how you beat Donovan. Just make sure he's not heard. But I'm not going anywhere. Hey, you guys, do not forget to check out my girl, DHK, on Sundays at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's the DHK show. We talk about a lot of topics. We talk about all kinds of stuff that goes on in the black community. If you guys happen to have a topic you want us to talk about, let us know. You know? We have no problem letting, uh, letting, letting you know that. Uh, I'm on the War Zone Monday through Friday. Uh, 5, uh, 5, p 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, Pacific Standard Time. I'm on that show. And don't forget, Dimitri and I have my show, Free Flow Friday, on Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we talk about all kinds of topics and stuff like that. Hey, you guys, I did not see the uh, Coming to America. I don't want to see it. Some things don't need a sequel. 
uh, Friday, definitely get me a new sequel. Just leave it alone. Just leave the shit alone. But I want you guys to get hip to my girl, Tamara Johnson Sheely. If you really want to know what's going on in Congress and what's going on uh, with your representative, check uh, Tamara out. She has a show called Keeping Up With Congress. Uh, Monday through Thursday, you can catch her up on YouTube, and she's also on Facebook, and she goes through the bills that are going through the House and in Congress. Very informative if you're really interested. But no, you guys aren't, because you're going to do everything that you guys can say to down uh, and protect NASA. You know, I'm just so embarrassed sometimes by some of you guys' actions. You don't have to believe us. You don't have to support us. But God damn it, stop supporting white supremacy. When you guys talk your bullshit, I definitely don't say you're wrong. I might not agree with it. But I don't say you're wrong. If that's how you feel, that's how you feel. But you're not going to change my mind because you're not coming with me with facts. For every fact that you come up with, I can come up with a counter fact and say this is what's really going on based off this, not no goddamn uh, soundbite. Uh, this song here was a very, very good song of mine, Return of the Mac by Mark Morrison. I was walking into a club in Australia during Tandem Thrust 97, and I was in a town called Rockhampton, Australia, and I walked into this club, and man, I had never heard the song, and I was just like, yep, this is me, this is me, Return of the Mac. But I'm not going anywhere, you guys. Like I said, I'm getting back into the podcast. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, you know, we got to stick together at the end of the day because as things are going, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And you know what? The veil has been lifted. A lot of you people are waking up, and I thank you guys. Thank you guys for, don- for donations. Again, uh, Jerry Wayne Monroe, he's going for the Houston uh, School Board. We're going to get him elected, and we're going to show you guys what a representative is supposed to look, look like. So check him out on the War Zone if you've got the time. Every dollar counts, $2, $5, whatever you need to do, donate, donate, donate. You just got your stimulus check. Your stimulus check is on the way. Donate to these candidates that are are actually out there doing the work, damn it. Stop voting for Maxine Waters, who's talking about why is empowering to women. What kind of shit is that? Support new black media. I'm Donovan Siddiq.